have a seat at the table with some men with confidence. Welcome once again to the Open Mics Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the building. The entire crew is here with us. I'm just going to put the mic down for just a second so the fellas can shout themselves out. Uh, Sean, what's up, buddy? Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? We good. We good. Ronald, what's going on, man? I am doing wonderful. Everything is going good. Let's do it. Everything is awesome. I got you. I hear you. And Mr. Tony, what's up? Everything is awesome. I was just down here saying <laughs> Lego movie in effect. <laughs> I couldn't resist, but I'm doing all right. He said everything is wonderful, man. That was the first thought that came to my head. But, you know, I'm glad the fellas are here and we are chipper and spry and in a good mood. Let's get it cracking. Let's do what we do. Fellas, I got to semi-interesting question i say semi because i feel like i know the answer to this but just curious to see what you boys are thinking we are all men who pride ourselves on being able to do what we do being providers caregivers take uh provide for those around us who are in need at some point have you guys ever thought about when a man should stop working when do we when does that need to provide end? <laughs> Who's getting the mic first? Ronald, you going first? Oh, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, I'm you going, going to go, you jump go. in this. Go ahead. Immediately. Go. <clears throat> Never. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. We Never. Never get to stop. Never you know how long we work? As long as outcast forever. Forever, ever, forever, forever, ever, ever, ever. ever, ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, All right. You, you, you're born, you work, you die. <laughs> that is the life of a man. Some in the middle, maybe you might have a little bit of fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to argue that point. I feel like that is a very concise answer. That is not the most favorable way to look at it, but I get it. I don't really have much to say to that. Somebody stop me because I'm rambling. Somebody else has to Okay, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. Um, actually, I don't have a different thought. <laughs> I kind of agree with Tony. I mean... When there's a man, look, check this out. I'm single and I still have to work because we have stumbled upon a problem here in America where we're not getting ahead. Regular people like me and like you are not getting ahead. Back in the early 2000s, I made $10 an hour and I could kind of make it off of ten dollars an hour i can spend thirty dollars and buy enough food to feed my single self for a week i can't do that now i gotta spend at least a hundred just to, to to feed myself for a week and that doesn't even take me out through the whole week i still got two weeks before i get paid again and there's i'm hearing about people who are making way more than me, almost um, six figures, and they aren't able to take care of themselves. So when does a man stop working? Never. You stop working when your body is physically unable to move. And I would dare say even when you're dead, you still have to work. Because if you are the sole provider, you have to keep, you have to set things up so that things don't fall apart once you're gone, your wife is going to need to be able to keep functioning once you're gone. And don't let her be elderly and unable to work herself. Oh, my goodness. Hey, hey the same old thing on and on. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Nothing <laughs> to see here. <laughs> Ronald say you got to pay bills after you dead. <laughs> 
<laughs> after you did. Listen, no. That's right. Is it, is it wow. not viable? Is but it hey, not if, viable? If, if, if I die and I didn't pay you, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is a fair point because if you, you know, you married and you have a wife that you love and want to provide for, part of that means taking care of her and not leaving her in a bind or leaving her holding the bag. So, yeah, that's yeah, that, that's a real Sean. What you got, man? That's who. That hey, heavy. listen, you take sixteen tons. What do you get? Another, Another day, day older, 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 deeper in debt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I owe my soul to the company store. <laughs> listen, bro. You know, I I am definitely Ooh. I, I uh, apparently not going to disagree at all uh from that standpoint because you know once you are in that role once you you know when you're young that's the first thing first thing we want to do is take care of our families right take care of ourselves first off like rhino saying right first off we got to take care of us then the the eventual goal is to get a woman you know who thinks you're kind of semi-cute and maybe you take care of her and then you want to have kids and you have to take care of them and you you work you take you you handling all that's going good. Your kids grow up, they leave the house. You think it's over? It's not over. <laughs> they go keep calling you back for stuff. So you still, even if you think that you can retire or whatever at that particular stage, or you don't have to work, you go feel like you want to go back to work because your kids are hitting you because you want them to make it, and they're not out there quite making it from that standpoint. So you're working, you're doing that, and even from I'm gonna take this from an even different standpoint, even. If you get lucky enough to be able to, you know, legitimately uh, work at a plant or at a, a job for a number of years, and and they're the ones telling you, "Come on, Sean, you know, going home, you done been here working for Coca Cola for thirty one years. We got your check cut. You gonna make this the rest of the uh, you know, just 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 going home. We can't even have you here, pops. We well, you know we call you pops around here, man. We can't even have you out here, pops. This is starting to be a liability. You know what I'm saying? Going home, pops. Sit down, chill out. You good? Not a liability. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you we, we if you didn't know, there's a point where they send you home because you are a liability to the company. They don't want to pay you more money because they have to ask questions. You will answer those questions. Well, pops. You know, Pops is 71 years old. What was he still doing on the warehouse floor, man? That didn't make any sense. You know, <laughs> which he, of course, a pallet fell on him and broke his ankle. An empty pallet. It doesn't matter. Anything would have killed him at that man. Send oh him my home. Gosh. But even at that, they give you a check and you go to the house. You actually have, or if, if that is a dis- decent wage, because don't get me wrong, with the way they doing things now, Y'all know it, right? With the way they're doing stuff now, you can still be expecting to try to go work somewhere. The best thing you can look for is, like, maybe now you can do something that uh, is not going to require your physical labor, you know what I'm saying, from that standpoint. And then, you know, there's church. There's still kids. You still have to work. Even if you're not getting paid for that job, you're still working in some form of fashion doing something. If you still got a wife, your wife still wants you to do stuff. All that stuff you was doing from before, she still wants you to do. Pick up your clothes. Carry this out here for me. <laughs> Kill this bug. Whatever it is that you did before, you still got to do. So, yeah, we, you, deaf, yes, you know, and then, you know, I we was talking about this a little bit earlier. <laughs> Maybe the job begins of trying to beg to get into heaven. <laughs> Lord, I need you to forget all this stuff I did when I was working. <laughs> I oh, am a man. sinner. I repent. I need to work now to try to see oh, if man. I can get through them gates. <laughs> Sean, you said something though that just kind of made me think of something. And I'm, that's an interesting idea and concept. You know, we're talking about men and when they stop working, but you touched on this wife, and we've all kind of mentioned the significant other spouse, whatever aspect of it. And that is a very interesting dichotomy as well with the uh coming you stop working but then that expectation is what, what you're just gonna be around the house all day ain't you got something to do don't you have a lodge meeting to go to don't you got some bowling to go do with some friends go fishing go something you need to be t- 
doing something. You can't just be sitting here. And... It, they will one, give you one of my this. favorite movie quotes: Kimberly Elise and John Q. I need you to do something. <laughs> what do you want? It something. <laughs> but I, I hey, lobbed that one up there for you. <laughs> listen. Listen, y'all tripping. It, it would be more specific, I think, on of a list than that. Like I just said, it's more specific. Women express themselves, and by the time you are that late into a marriage, she ain't gonna be scared to tell you. Well, you know, now that you got all this time on your hands, Sean, you remember how you always was supposed to clean out the attic? Now would be a good time for you to clean out. What? What makes you think I can climb? Okay, all right. Look, clean out the garage. Let's um change the carpets and all the curtains in the house. <laughs> remember, you kept saying we ain't new new carpets. <laughs> The curtains that was 26 years ago. We need new carpet and curtains now, <laughs> and you have time. It's always gonna be something. It's always gonna be something. Pick that up, took that over there, exactly. slide that right there, pull that over there. I don't like it right there. Put it over there. <laughs> what's the um, what's the commercial, the old commercial, Tony, where um, they what was it they said how to move how to move a, a um, a couch with one finger or whatever the case may be, and they had the lady. Pointing at the two guys moving her couch over this way, over that way. <laughs> yes, sir. So let me think about, let me try to sway the conversation a little bit. Instead of okay. r- reality, right? <laughs> right. When do men stop working now? Mm. What should it be? <laughs> What what should it be like? I know that there are a select few that get to retire early. You know that's that's a small percentage. We're not talking about them, but the average dude, when should he be able to stop or dial down his working? That is an interesting concept. When should a man be able to dial down his working? I would dare say when he's a. Uh... When he's nearing retirement, or for that matter, when he can afford to, if he, by some look at the draw, was good with his money and he's able to um, <clears throat> balance his life off to go do something that he wants to do rather than work all the time, um, I would say then, and that's at whatever age that is, we understand that um, some people were born into rich families. And was given a million dollars, you know, when they were a kid, and they turned it into a billion. But, um, but for the regular man, you said, I would dare say when he reaches that point, when um, he's able to um, self-sustain and it won't be a big deal. Um, and if he has to, something happens, he's like, you know what? I got to go back on the job. He can go back on the job and he can, he has that option. But um, there's more to it than just um, working and making money. There's a psychological aspect of it because you've been coming to a place for so many days, weeks, months, years. It's kind of hard to leave that place, <laughs> truth be told. You know, I, I'd i imagine that I would have a hard time. Uh, well, no, no, I don't have to imagine. I know. Um, just thinking about my last job, it, it was very difficult to quit because in my mind, I had already built up so much loyalty and so much um, self-respect and so much uh, of a developed such, such an attachment to my coworkers, good and bad. You know, but uh, when it was time to leave, it was time to leave. So, so when the time comes, I, if you notice, I'm not putting a specific <laughs> number or a specific date. So, I got. It. No, I think Ronald was onto something though. In in that point of when the man can afford to retire, right, and that's going to be different for everybody. When you can afford to retire, that to me looks like that point in time in life where the people that you were responsible for are able to be responsible for themselves. And not just responsible for themselves, but 
responsible for themselves enough to where if the roles had to be reversed and you needed to ask them for something, they could actually come through. Now, understand as like men, parents, whatever, you don't want to find yourself in that position situation where you're asking your child to come through. But at the same time, you know, I've heard it said that that's the circle of life almost. Initially, you start off raising children, taking care of them, or the joke was in the beginning, you change their diapers and at your end, they're changing yours. So if it's legit at that point, then you definitely don't need to be working if they're changing your diapers. Just saying. That's that's a good spin off. That's a good point for me to spin off of where I was going to say, Terrence, that you are. I didn't want to. I'm not trying to clip your point where you. Yeah, I completely agree. That was part of what I was going to say. Now, so like Tony said, we're talking fantasy land, not reality land now. So, right. So going into fantasy land, if it was me and I say about those time frames that or when do you think a man should be able to. So I'm going to throw in a few. I'm going to throw in a few hard times, hard, hard years that I say, OK, 20 to 25 years with any one company. I think you should be able to go sit down. You done gave them some time. I think they should well compensate you. 20 to 25 years, you should sit down with, with any one company. If you have that that kind of solid time, that would be a nice dream world. It's not going to happen. It'd be a nice dream world. 40 years cumulatively, 40 years of working cumulatively to me is enough. That's double the 20 that you would put in with any one company. 40 years total. If my resume stretches back that I can actually tell you I started working and I have a 40-year resume, I should be able to sit down. I think I'm going to start to think that's the points that I am, am at with a level with myself. And I don't care if they're across the board. I went to Burger King. I was at Food Line. Then I was over here. Then I was there for a little bit. Then I was there for seven years till I slapped him and got pissed off. And I went over <laughs> here. I don't care. Okay. Not I don't care. <laughs> 40, yeah, whatever. Okay. 40 years cumulatively. Right. Uh, that's about the point when I'm going to be like, hey, man, you know, it's getting up. And, and, and lastly, like you said, Terrence, lastly, like you said, I, I shouldn't be wearing diapers to work. We shouldn't be once when, when I become an old man of the community that way. OK, when I start qualifying, uh, not even start qualifying when I'm 10 years into qualifying for the senior discount at Ryan's. That's it. That should be it. There ain't no more job for me. I right? I got 10 years. I've been a senior discount. <laughs> so 65. <laughs> <laughs> is oh whatever money I've made, whatever I, I that's that's about the end of time because the body, like I was saying from before, right? You could be killed by a pallet at Coca Cola. Okay, <laughs> that's not that's not what you want. <laughs> now, My body now, is frail to this level, so I need to stop. So I just want to say number one, shout out the Ryan's because ain't heard that in a minute. So if they still out there, shout out the Ryan's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But yeah, man, we don't need to be on the job if we're still in, if we're at that place of being that brittle, that frail, that, you know, I don't want to say soft, but that easily damaged. Yeah, it's time to say for sure. Well, for sure. The fact of the matter is we are easily damaged and all it takes is one good incident and you're done. That's the human body is frail. What can I say? That's a hard truth. Anyway, that's true, too. I did like the time frames that Sean gave. The 20 to 25 years, that's very similar to the military. Military, you do 20 years in, you're good for life. And they will... I'll, I'll say you're good for life. I ain't gonna go into the to the specific take care because we, we all got issues with the VA and everything. But anyway. <laughs> Plus it ain't as good as you think. Let every, hey, look, because I, I know I know some veterans just, you know, if we got the veterans that's listening to us, they just threw something. We There's three in this in this group, but I know there's some veterans that did their 20 years and threw something at the TV about, I ain't, I can't leave. <laughs> with what they give me, <laughs> I am not good. <laughs> right. I'm 36 yeah. years old. <laughs> and the money that they give me on my retirement check, if you knew, is 
of my E7 pack. <laughs> but I also Thanks. like the 40 years total. For, that's a that's a good and that should take you right to the social security age. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. Now the whole the whole diaper thing kind of gets to be like to me that, that ain't a dream world. Like I shouldn't have to decide between working and, and, and you know <laughs> <laughs> going to the bathroom on my own. I feel like once I lose the ability to go to the bathroom on my own, I feel like that has retired. <laughs> My my bowels have retired me. Like <laughs> they have taken me off the job. But in in a real world, I feel like once you as let's say you as a parent, once you as a parent have taken all your children to the point where they're all out the house, they're all doing their own life, regardless of how well or how bad they are. If they're living their own lives and you're now an empty nester of just you and your wife, or if it's just you, you should be able to reel it in a little bit. Like you should be able to not go as hard. And, and, and I think it's a big deal because there's like, there's this theory, like it's called John Henry syndrome. Like you remember the story of John Henry, like kept hammering. Like, yeah. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. Basically, yes, sir. like I've all I've always felt that we've lost a lot of good men too early because they worked themselves into their grave early, and I don't like that because it seems like it's a stereotype for us that we have that expectation to to do that and that we're not considered valuable if we're not working or you know making money things like that mhm no that is absolutely true we deal with enough stuff as is to be men in the society and providing and everything else and then to feel like you work and it's never enough yeah that's a heavy weight that's a lot of pressure to carry and that unfortunately has had some unfortunate re- repercussions and as i say that uh repercussions it made me think of another word but sean actually started me down this track first um because I love the way he laid out the time frames, right? And the qualifications for it. So I was just thinking, you know what? First up, it'd just be great if there was something for us, since we're all men of a specific age and complexion, so to speak, um, that would kind of give us, if nothing else, either a nest egg or a launch pad, depending on how you want to look at it, to kind of a buffer if you will to deal with some of that you know and that's that word reparations right so if well first out let me just ask the question because i don't want to assume here what are your thoughts on reparations yay nay for against i would say yay and not okay. just because not just because I want a quick buck from the government, um, but because um, we, as a person descended from slaves, we've been through the ringer. I have to be twice as good as someone of a lighter complexion just to be considered good enough. You know, and I we've gone just gone through so much things I can't even explain right now. Put put into words, you know, treat it like animals. People today still some there are some people that still think of us as animals, think of us as a liability. And not only that, there are people that think that they're the ones who are being victimized, but they aren't descended from the people that were like I'll stop right there. 
No, but, they aren't descended yeah. from the people who were actually victimized. That that is right. That's yeah, right. that's a valid point. Exactly. You know, so I'm like you 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 offered those slaves 40 acres and a mule. And some of those slaves may have received some of that. But the promise was short lived and it, and uh, it, 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 there was never a return to it. There was never a way um, that was made to um, provide some form of compensation for the uh, the lack, the inhumane way in which we were treated. And for me, all these years later, to still have to be affected by this because. Um, Slavery was more than half of American history, if, if you didn't realize that. Check the numbers. It's more than half of American history. But we still have to deal with the effects of that, even today. I, I wish this wasn't true, but it is what it is. So, yeah, it's time for the American government to put their money where their mouth is. Well said. And yes, and yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. We can send billions of dollars to Ukraine so they can fight a war against Russia when really what they need to do is come to a peace talk and work something out. But no, we're gonna send them billions of dollars, and then the people of, of Maui gotta have their land taken from them because oh well, you guys are gone now, and the fire's done, and their tribal land. Land that was uh, 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 that was rightfully theirs is going to be taken away from them, and then they're going to get seven hundred bucks. Are you serious right now? It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. It I totally agree with you. That doesn't make sense at all. Okay, so we've heard Rhino's thoughts on it. Who's up? All right, so. You know, everything that Rhino said is absolutely true and correct. And, you know, I'm going to back that up with a resounding yes. Yes, because of honor the contract. Honor the contract. Even Everything that Rhino said plus honor the contract, right? Uh, you can talk about all oh, you want to quit. You know, he said something, uh, you know, because the opposition, I shouldn't say the opposition, but people who have an opposing view, you know, think that, you know, Oh, we don't need that money and whatever the case may be. You just want extra money now. And just anything you can get for stuff that, you know, you know what I mean? Or whatever the case may be. But my thing is honor the contract. Honor the contract. And especially since we're talking about the federal government. Okay. I have student loans since from 1996. You still want me to pay them. <laughs> Are you not still looking for me? If I get too big of, of, a, uh, of a tax return, you're going to take them. So... That's honoring the contract. When I call you up and say, look, you know, I'd rather not pay those from that standpoint. You expect me to honor the contract. So I expect you to do the same thing. I don't care how old it is and what far back it is. You signed up to do this deal. Honor the contract. So, yes. Okay. So. I agree with y'all that we were done wrong, but I'm no for reparations. And it's not because I don't believe that we are not owed it. It's for, for two reasons, really. I don't see a realistic way for them to pay it out or for, for them for them to for them to make it up. Shall I say? I'm not even going to say payment. I don't see a realistic way for them to 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 give us back that. Mainly because whenever you try to make the rules for who qualifies for it, then all of a sudden everybody's going to be black. Everybody's going to be a descendant of a slave, right? But the main reason why I don't like the idea of reparations because it puts a finite price tag on what our ancestors have been through. 
So let, let me give an example. So okay. let's say that reparations is a million dollars. Everybody that's a descendant of a slave gets a million dollars, right? And then the United States government cuts you a check for a million dollars. By you accepting that check, to me, that says we're even. I don't want to hear you complain about being black. I don't want to hear you complain about prejudice. I don't want to hear you complain about the system. I don't want to hear you complain about not getting a fair shake. Yeah, you had slavery. We gave you a million dollars. You're we're even now. But 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 I'm still behind in education. I'm still behind in this area. I'm still behind in that area. But we're even now. You asked for this. We gave you this. We're good. We don't owe you anything more. And that's the main reason why I'm not for it because I feel like it kind of, it kind, and and I know it may sound like Tony, Tony, you ain't want us to get get our checks, you ain't want us to get paid. Well, I I would like a check, yeah, sure, send me money, I like money, but I don't like the thought of them being able to claim that they have solved slavery or that that it's over. You see what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't like that idea. Okay. I get it. I get it. That's an interesting take. And I understand your point. You don't like the idea of them being able to say that we're even and we're square now. That That's totally fair. I think for me, the bigger question is don't they already feel like it's over and we're even to the point to where history is being rewritten, revised, revamped to almost eliminate it anyway. So if that, I mean, with that being my perspective, I personally am still in favor of said reparations now i have also heard the point that you know that opens the door for everybody to be a descendant of a slave right and i get that point i feel like there would have to be a very specific qualification process you know not just every person who's descendant of a a slave, right? Because, you know, this is the land of immigrants. So you could have immigrate, uh, you could have come into the country from a different means, but you're still a descendant from a slave. I mean, if you came to the U.S. from, say, Jamaica, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a descendant of a slave. So I I feel like with the right vetting process in place, that might eliminate some of that. Um, The other aspect of it would be the number. And I get the point of, you know, how much is enough or what dollar value do you place on it? I, I can't answer that. But I feel like it's more than zero. So let me try to respond to some of those things because I didn't spend very much time on the how do you plan it, right? Sure. First of all, first of all, let's 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 go down that rabbit hole. Is it just financial? Is it just a check? I think most people hear that and assume that yes, it's just a check. But okay. Let, let's go with so, that just for sake of conversation. Okay. Sure. It's just Who's the money come from? Or where's the money come from? Well, say who you, says it has to be it? Go ahead. I, I was gonna say to uh to say that it comes from the US government almost seems unfair. And I, I'll say why that's difficult, okay. 
So let let's assume that there were, well, not assume, but we know that there were certain individuals, certain families that made money off of having slaves, right? Of course. Absolutely. What what percentage of the population do they represent? Like you gotta keep in mind that this is a country of immigrants, right? So like let's be generous, assume that they were 10% of the population at that time. Are we gonna make the other 90% of the you know people that are Americans that whose families may not have even been here then pay? Like what if that, what if that, someone, you know, what if their family came over in the 1900s? Like, do they get taxed for this? I mean, I can, I feel you on what the process. What if, it's, what, if it's, what if it's a white family from up north that never had slaves? Do they have to pay for this? You, 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 well, and, and, I, I, <laughs> And I'm think about I'm not, really, I'm not really looking for an answer. I'm just trying to show that it's a difficult process to think about it. Then you have to decide who qualifies. Do you give it to the parents? Do you give it to the kids? Do you give it to the parents and the kids? Do you have to be black for three generations? How 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 long do you have to be African American? What what if you migrated here from Africa? What if your family migrated here from Africa in 1930? Do you get it? Well, again, that would all be a part of that qualification process. You know, I think the issue that prohibits this from really happening more than anything is what we're talking about right now, coming to a consensus. I, I feel like, you know, normally you saying being against it would be like such a firebomb that nothing else you have to say would be heard considered taken under advisement and it would become so much of a conversation focused on well what do you mean no that the absolutely uh missed the bigger questions of i'm not saying no i'm just saying if we do this we need to make sure we do it right yeah how are we gonna do it let's do this in the right process so yeah can I can I give an alternative? And this this might sound like my answer changes because I don't know. I think it because when when I hear reparations, what I think most people hear is a check, right? Yeah. I think that the I think that the answer is not money. I think the answer is policy change. I think that we need similar like the way that affirmative action helped us in the workplace, I think we need similar programs like that in other areas. I think we need, I think we need preferential treatment when it comes to housing, when it comes to getting loans for small businesses, things like that. Like, I think that we should, I think that if you can, if you can show that you are a descendant of slaves, your, your mortgage should be 5% cheaper or, if you can show that you're a descendant of slaves, then your your credit score should have to be here instead of here in order to get a loan. You see what I'm saying? Because, because we've been held behind for so long, they should give us a lower bar of entry in certain areas or preferential treatment in certain areas in order to try to catch up. You know, I think we should get, like Sean talked about student loans. How about more grant, more Pell grants are higher for you know African Americans. How about that? Like you get you get a higher payout. And I'm not saying that this has to last from now until eternity. Make it last, oh say, 400 years. <laughs> oh say, say 400 years. You know. Just, just throw it out a random it's a ballpark number just a, that I just threw out of there from nowhere. Random number we throw out. <laughs> but consider the money, the amount of money they made off of those slaves. Yeah, four hundred years sounds about right. That's about. But right. I think it's more policy change 
than an actual check. Because what what I'm here's here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of if you give a, if shoot. We saw what happened with the pandemic when you flood that much money into the economy at one time, it ruins the economy. And all of a sudden inflation is crazy and eggs is $5 a carton. <laughs> you know, just stuff becomes stupid. Like if you, if you give, and I, I hate to say it, but I feel like Dave Chappelle kind of, kind of gave us an example of what might happen if they just paid out reparations that, we just start buying up Cadillacs and all kinds of stuff. Not to sound, not to sound too racist or anything, but it's it's going to mess up the economy. It's going to mess it up, and it's going right. to it's going to cause inflation in a in a bunch of areas that we don't need it. You know, if 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 they used common sense, it wouldn't. This is something that I often, often talk about all the doggone time. Seems like you would use common sense if we were four small business owners, in my particular opinion, and okay. something something caused our um, all of our individual, you know, uh, profit margins to double, yay, even triple because of a particular situation. You see what I'm saying? I would like to think yeah. that that's not the new number to draw off of. You see what I'm saying? But like you, like you were saying, Tony, that's one of the reasons why you know I had to even understand before. Where I was like, why did the economy get messed up when you had extra money flowing in? You know, and, and they're talking about the Dave Chappelle joke, I used to think to myself, actually, it's a joke. It was funny. That's cool, but actually, they should look at that as a reason to do it because you know we're gonna go spend money. You know what I'm saying? You give a black folk a bunch of money, we're going to go spend money, right? At places that probably, what, XYZ percent of other folks own, right? So other mm -hmm. folks are going to get that money, like, right back. Like, like it's coming right back to you, whether it's the Cadillac dealership or the BMW dealership or the whatever, whatever it is, it's turning around, it's coming back in. My problem, like I said, is with those business owners who now, with that influx of money, take that and say this is my new profit margin based on this instead of saying common sense your influx just happened because reparations happened or because of people getting stimulus checks or whatever the case may be how can you make this next number the new number when you just know you had a, a, a new influx you see what i'm saying how is that the new number how is that the new demand that's not going to be sustainable you nonsensical idiots what makes you think that that was going to be sustainable you see what I'm saying? That's not the new market and, and number to hit. That was an individual type of thing. But anyway, I don't, you know, that's that's me going off on my rant and consumerism. And I I will get pissed off so, in a quick minute. To, to so <laughs> let, let, let me respond to that by mentioning my catchphrase. People are stupid. <laughs> And they do <laughs> stupid things, but it's been but, a while since we had the catchphrase, so appreciate but also, that. But also, if you take that much money at one point in time, if you if you add a whole bunch of money without removing any money, then the money that exists is now worthless, meaning prices go up. So you get a million dollar check today, it don't buy what a million dollars used to buy yesterday. It now only buys five hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff yeah, or three hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. That's true. And guess what? Here's the problem: when you spend that million and get your three hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff, all the prices are still high. Exactly. Exactly right. And they all maintain and they all stay high after and your all million. They, is and done. they all stay high. And now you got to figure out. How to keep making that much money. Exactly. This is okay. exactly right. Okay. So I, I feel like we've kind of wandered down this rabbit hole a little bit with regards to reparations being in the form of a one-time payout, so to speak, right? And I feel like there are other ways that this could be handled. Tony kind of alluded to that previously. And I'm pretty sure that in other cultural groups that are actually being paid reparations by this country they are not necessarily just receiving a one-time stimulus advance type of situation so 
I mentioned the word before consensus. You know, I feel like coming to a consensus on something might be worthwhile in order to make the make a real push and effort in trying to have this achieved, right? So right here amongst the four of us, what would we think needs to be a part of a reparations package? Okay, I feel like I've been talking a lot, but I want to jump in real quick because I was the only person that said no to reparations, right? Uh, Here's one of the major problems is that in order to get reparations, they have to actually admit there was an atrocity committed, right? And I think that that's one of the big problems is that there's not even a consensus on that. The first consensus. Yes, sir. Like, was there enough damage done to even warrant for, don't even use the word reparation, to even warrant something to be done? You see what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't believe in reparation, like, was there enough damage done to warrant us taking action? And it seems like the government can't even get that far. This is true. This is true. They got to okay. first of all agree to well, do something. Well, let me present a different perspective on that with regards to the government. You know, the state of California is currently actively trying to enact their own form of reparations, right? So that, in my mind, at least translates to a state level government acknowledging that there's been enough damage done for something to be taken into consideration for lack of a better way of putting it something of that magnitude is up more than likely going to end up going up to a supreme court level at that point in time i feel like once you get to that level of conversation that is uh going to definitely cause a consensus to have to happen so you know if we're talking about this from that fantasy land perspective again let, let's I, i'm thinking in terms of that perspective of in a quote-unquote perfect world where you know people have acknowledged that something has happened and there was some sort of atrocity then what do we do next i guess he's saying that's what you're saying you're saying so what what would be in it what would right. we like to see you right know, uh added to it if you know, if I was on the panel when they said, "Okay, reparations gonna happen," uh, we're taking votes on on what uh, what everyone would like to see being put in it. I get that. Um, that's a good question, though, too. That's the reason why I was sitting there. I've been thinking about it pretty much since you said it. Um, but I like I like some of the you know the previous answers. I definitely like Tony's answer about the you know grant money and stuff like that for education. You know what I'm saying? And maybe like a a, a little you know, bit more of a bump if we're going to live, you know, because I can see what he's saying as far as like, you know, maybe everybody can't just get a stimulus check or whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah, I I would maybe like to see um, a little bit more of a, you know, a bump and a push uh, kind of a get ahead in um, the education levels because based on, you know, even though when you look at the actual apples to apples on you know, what was promised back then, you know, may now you may say, well, it didn't have anything to do with education. Well, you know, that's what we can make it a part of now. You can look at those places in which where we feel like we might be running behind a bit um, and, and, and not as good as our predecessors. And we could, we could pick those areas out and say, we need, we need maybe a little bump here, you know, home ownership, like, like Tony was saying, uh, in general, credit scores, things of that nature. So, 
I kind of agree with that. Okay. So, uh, something in regards to a bump in credit scores and something education oriented. Right. All right. Um, anybody else got any thoughts? Yeah. I, Maybe I, I, when uh, I do my income taxes and I could present um, bills for, say, medical expenses uh, or what have you, I can get some sort of deduction or return from that. That would be a good idea. Okay, so deductions, a deduction based uh, component. Interesting. Tony, any thoughts? I'm sure you got something. Yeah. Um. So a lot of what I'm thinking is that direct payment equal bad. <laughs> but I think that there are other ways to get to help financially without putting a lump sum of cash in someone's hand. Like Rhino just mentioned, like a tax deduction, you know, for for medical expenses. Okay, I can understand that. I, I like the idea of preferential loans. I like the idea of of small business loans, PPP loans, you know, forgive forgivable loans. Like if if you take the money out, you establish your business, you have a certain amount of employees, and then after a certain amount of time, if your business is solid, then you don't have to pay it back. You know, th things like that, you know, just, I, I, I feel like the government has the ability to do a lot of things to help out black people, the descendants of slaves, but they don't have to necessarily just write a check and send us something. They could because there, there's a lot of gaps that we have, you know, compared to other races. Like we're we're not as we're not as educated. We're not as graduated on on you know college level. We don't make as much money. We don't. What what category are we not behind in? You know, seriously. Like we're we're behind in just about everything. And and that's not to be funny, but that's just the truth. So we. It, and. Here's here's number three that I didn't even mention before. When I was talking about number one, I don't see how we could put it together. And number two, I I don't like the idea of them being able to, being able to say, "All right, you asked for this, we gave it to you, you're good." You know, <laughs> let's let's erase slavery from history. We're 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 good. You know, <laughs> the debt's been paid. But number three is that. I think we don't need their help. <laughs> I think that we as black people, I think that the most effort towards closing the gap is going to be done by us. I think it's going to be up to, we, we can't wait on them to make it right. And I'm, I'm trying to stay in, in hopeful land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's stay in hopeful land. 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 We don't need grumpy smirk. Hopeful smirk. To... Hopeful smirk. Well, well, when I say hopeful land, is hoping that they will acknowledge that a, a wrong was done, and they're going to try and put real effort into making making up for that. Right. Like it's not grumpy land where like everything's going to going to crap. But what I'm thinking is that. We don't even wait for them. We know where our holes are, right? We know that we're behind financially. We know that we're behind 
education wise. We know that we're behind in these areas, but with the internet, with technology, we're not limited by knowledge. We can patch those holes ourselves. Like there are some, you know, like there are going to be some obstacles that we go through. There are going to be some things that we deal with, but a lot of it can be fixed by us, right? Like we can, we can mm-hmm. yeah. educate ourselves. Like we can study and we can learn and we can, you know, get secondary education and get the jobs that pay more money and use that money to buy land. And you see what I'm saying? Like a lot of this stuff is under control. Like we just work together as a community. We can get this done. Right. And stop, stop waiting. Stop waiting on uncle Joe. <laughs> cause, cause Joe, Joe looked like he having a hard time, you know, <laughs> to, to go back to Sean's, Sean look to go back to what Sean said earlier. It seemed like Joe should be trying to trying to hang it up because because the pampers and stuff. It's, I mean, I'm saying <laughs> you get killed by a dog on pallet, man. That's not funny. It's not even right. <laughs> pops, pops with that smell, pops. Don't worry about that smell, young brother. Just, 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 just. Uh, 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 hold on, I forgot yeah, what I was going to say. We not to do that to <laughs> Uncle Joe now. <laughs> Oval depends. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, so I'm hearing what everybody's saying, and I love it. But there's one thing I didn't hear, and I'm curious to know what you guys think about this as a potential caveat to this reparations conversation. I feel like the biggest thing for me that came from this was, you know the work that was done in this country, building it. It was built off the uh, work of slaves. And with the work being done, that means there was physical property that was acquired, taken, um, et cetera, in that process. And because of it, I feel like there should be some sort of land ownership component. Now, this might be one of those things where if we're talking about qualifications, we might have some sort of tiered system so that, you know, if you're at the very, I won't say the top, but like the, let's call it the platinum package for lack of a better way of putting it. If you're in that category, there should be 40, well, maybe not 40 acres, but some land aspect of it to be a pro- included since they didn't honor the contract full circle yeah i like that i i like it in theory uh i think the, the hard problem is is that most land that you want is owned right like the only way to make that happen would be to literally take it from someone else and give it to you well and well and then and and i'm not going to say i mean to go back to to you know what Terrence is saying in a way, it, when you it look wasn't at like acquired home, like right, it was acquired that way. But I also was gonna say, man, there's more, man, there's more land in this country, man. You you'd be surprised, my friend. You'd be surprised when you go. I mean, as far as just like he, you know, we just talking about like stuff like even oh, just yeah. looking. That's why I say the land you wanted. The la- I mean, mm-hmm. even 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 in sometimes, man. Sometimes, like sometimes, say for example, if they told me I could live. You know, I could live in Colombia if I could find the land. You know, and if they did, if they did that, that old, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I tell you what, there, buddy. Um, if you find the spot here in Colombia, we will build the house. That's what I told him, Bill. <laughs> You'll never find it, but it's it's possible. It is absolutely possible that I'll come back to that table and be like, right here. Uh, uh, he found it, Bill. You know, it's, it's, it's actually possible, man. There are places, but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But Tone, it is, it is, there is some places out there, man. Land is there's a lot. And I to back up what Terrence said. I, hey, I focus on the land that you want. That you because, want. I get it. I get it. Because you can get you can get a plot of land in Wyoming right now. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it <laughs> like on just, that. Just go and ask, and they will here, <laughs> have this acre. <laughs> and just please live here. You yeah, know that yeah. that's all they ask. Like 
please move your people here. Yeah, and, and that's what I was this and land. I, was <laughs> I can and I can agree, and I can agree seeing the problems with that for real. <laughs> now you're putting us all in a particular place that we wasn't at before. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? A whole bunch of black people want to go to Wyoming because they're giving us like free land. <laughs> The people we've never heard. Let me get off here, man. I gotta remember the, the buttons on. <laughs> all, all the red kingo states like that, man. Colorado, Wyoming. You just walk up there. Can I have some land? Please take this land from take us. Take this land, man. Nobody wants this. Nobody, nobody wants it. Nobody wants it out there. That's Are you bringing more people? <laughs> yeah, kids. And it's insane. It's insane that you can go through some of those places like Montana and Colorado and just see these it's like, good God. <laughs> I've often thought, though, that, you know, there's somebody who still owns it all. It's just nothing, it's nothing to do with it. It's like somebody still has that. It's just what are a, they going to do a with A lot it? of it's government owned. Like a lot of it's owned by, by the either, government, right? the, either the United States government or by like the local Cause, cause no one just nobody actually wants that. Want, nobody wants nobody it. <laughs> That's insane, man. Oh, only reason why I know that because I, I, I research like, are there places in America that will just give you land? And yes, there are there's, several there's places. places. There, there are cities that will give you land if you just agree to live there. If you because their population is going down and there's no one living there, they mm. they will there are even some places that will put you in a house as long as you agree to bring human beings that are breathing in and out there. <laughs> 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 with the concern, you think the concern would then be um, you know, some of those places, then you know, I guess I don't know. I don't know what I want to say becoming black, but just becoming, you know what I mean, in an urban populated area. I don't know. Like all of a sudden we'd be all in one place again. Like that's that's pretty it much take how a it lot is of now. To move at one time to one spot for that. To yes, happen. that's what that's what I'm saying. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't I can see how like you know <sighs> if if we went there with business owner minds and you know not only just staying their minds, but with the minds to you know to be entrepreneurs and do businesses and things of that nature. But, you know, again, I don't know. <laughs> I think we'd still see a modern age. Uh, what do I want to call it? I don't know. Migration. I don't know. Mig migration. That's a great yeah. word. Like a modern age migration. Yeah. That is absolutely an interesting way to, uh, put it but i like i don't think that uh migration is a terrible uh i don't think that's a terrible way to describe that aspect of what you're talking about but even still if a uh migration were to happen you know i'm not necessarily opposed to moving to well Maybe not Wyoming. I don't know. Mm. Nothing about Wyoming specifically, but um, you know, I, I'm a red ice fish, Terrence. I, I'm a look, man. I'm a heat guy, <laughs> not just a fan. You, I'm a, you won't be anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not not be not in Montana guy. or Wyoming because you done. That's Ooh. what I'm saying. I I get it, but you know. If it's a part of a package and, you know, there's the right incentives, I'll get over it. I, I can it. uh, I, I can find creative ways to warm my, uh, warm my dwelling and I can layer up. I get it. So, I don't know. I feel like this has been kind of an interesting conversation, especially considering where we started at and where we're ending up at now. This has been, <laughs> this has been. Oh wait, you know what? I, I'm I almost did a disservice. Ronald, did you have yes. anything else that you wanted to add to the 
potential rewriting of the reparations deal what would be your uh, contribution something that penalizes companies that try to price gouge us okay uh, i don't know if that's been said or not but that was one of the things that i thought of that i wanted to say because i know there's companies that are gonna gonna be like oh wait a minute you're african-american yeah you got the reparations money yeah this can of soda is 13 dollars yeah, I know it was two dollars yesterday. It's thirteen dollars now. That's probably the real thing. You know, and that's across the board. It, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Why the grape soda cost so much? <laughs> <laughs> Went straight to the grape soda. Y'all, y'all gonna get us in trouble like you, eventually. <laughs> eventually, y'all gonna get us in trouble. You, you, you know, grape soda's gonna go up. Cadillac's gonna go up. Lemon pepper wings, <laughs> lemon pepper wings, flats. <laughs> the flats are gonna cost more than the drops. absolutely. <laughs> Let's be for real. This is true. Jordans. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Tim's. Yes, sir. Boy said Tim's true story, but still, just yeah. Okay, on that note, um, I know I'm trying to go back around to make sure everybody's gotten their reparations requests in. Um, Did you have anything to add? Well, I mentioned the piece about the uh property, right? Um I did have one other point, well, one other aspect of this that I wanted to address, but I feel like we're kind of getting into the thick of it here a little bit. Somebody mentioned uh, having something in place to work for us similar to how affirmative action worked. And I get the concept, but I'm not necessarily sure I would use that as my example because I feel like a lot of times affirmative action in theory is like the Rooney rule in football. They say we're going to interview X amount of people and we're going to offer up these opportunities. But in the end, the result doesn't really reflect much change. Affirmative action for me looks the same way in the sense that sure, we have to have X amount of people hired or whatever the case may be Mm. but that also includes women and i'm not trying to be you know sexist or anything in saying it but a lot of times women both black and white have reaped more of a benefit i think sometimes in that instance as opposed to the spirit of that law if that makes sense Mm -hmm. oh yes Ooh, that's it. So, right. They just just make so it maybe affirmative. Mark. Maybe affirmative action is a bad comparison bad to use. As far as what I was talking about, I was thinking mainly, mainly the fact that the way that affirmative action was the, the concept of it, that it was designed with for the intent of trying to even the playing field for black people. So what I'm saying is that, so let's say that you go in for a loan, let's say the qualifications for, for everyone is at the same thing, but because you're black, you get a slightly lower interest rate. Gotcha. So it's not that you're fighting someone else to get in. The qualifications are the same, you just get a little bit more preferential treatment on for you know, and I'm pretty sure someone's gonna be upset. Well, why does he get this? Slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up, you know. <laughs> and similar to that, get a larger pale grant for the same reason. You know, and it's not about whether or not you qualify for getting into school, like it's not. You know, it's not 
It's not by you getting, you're knocking someone else out. Right. Like everyone's still eating. You're just getting the chicken breast and they're getting the drumstick. And I don't know how I ended up back at chicken. But anyway. Well. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave that alone and be quiet. Well, you know. <laughs> There's a theory on how you ended up on chicken, but <laughs> we won't go there in this particular podcast. Not this time. Maybe once the uh, mic's off. <laughs> but I think we have broken this topic down in a very interesting way and brought a few things to light that we're worth discussing, you know. I'm gonna open the floor up one last time to the group to see if there was anything else anybody had on their heart that you needed to get off before we wrap this up. If not, I extend the same invitation to our listeners. Drop a comment or two. Let us know what you think. Please don't uh, turn us off once you hear my man say he says no. Because we really had some good points, some good stuff. And if you're hearing it now, then you heard all of our points. But please add to the conversation. And as always, thank you for listening. Like, share, subscribe. God bless you. Good night. Peace.